Hello and welcome to The Bike Show and an episode that is full of fantasy facts and a fantastic new electric bike from Finland. First though, we're going to let Don take us on a road test that has a bit of a different slant to it. That's right, a road test. A test of a road. And some of you might recognise the road behind me, in which case Come along on a nice familiar journey. If you don't recognize this road, you're in for a treat. It is, of course, the Satellite Road. Yes, the Satellite Road. It's probably something you've at least heard of. It's the most famous road around Johannesburg and one of the most interesting, stretching 28 kilometers from the R563 to the R512. And that's part of what makes this piece of road particularly attractive. Literally here on one end of the satellite road, we are in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing here. There's Krugersdorp's about 30 kilometers that way. And quite frankly, if you're going to go somewhere from Krugersdorp, you'll take another route. Rustenburg's about 100 kilometers that way. And I don't know how that kind of lines up. On the other end, though, is Bröderström. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but um, there's nothing there. So you've got a road going from nowhere to nowhere, which for us motorcyclists is perfect. Of course I'll need something to ride, so I've got this. A bike that is not the newest and greatest, but like the road, it certainly is interesting. It's of course a BMW GS. It's not the latest greatest 1250 GS. Uh, that is an incredible bike, but that motorcycle is around 360,000 Rand, which you'll agree is, it's a lot of money. This is a 2015. GS. It's a 1200 GS, not the 1250. It's nowhere near as good as the 1250 GS, but this specific bike is 159,000 Rand, which I think you'll agree is a lot, it'll do a lot better on your wallet, let's just say. But what's more remarkable about this bike, and it's something you see a lot in the GS world, is that despite being seven years old, it only has 13,000 kilometers on the clock. Now, again, this happens a lot with both GSs, Harleys, those sort of leisure motorcycles where somebody buys one, doesn't really use it during the week and then every sort of weekend, second weekend, maybe even once a month, takes it out for a bit of a spin. It is a weekend bike. Now, you could say, oh boy, not a real bike, etc., etc. But the plus side for you and me is, is bikes like this then come on the market. This specific one comes from fired up motorcycles. As I say, 159,000 Rand and 13,000 kilometers on a GS. It's, it's, it's brand new. It's just run in. <laughs> and for 200,000 Rand less than the new equivalent, that, that's remarkable. And with that, we set off to explore. Let's not beat about the bush here. For a lot of people, the Sala Road is a 28 kilometer long racetrack. And to be fair to people who want to do that sort of thing, it is somewhat safer than most other roads. Not like I'd ever do anything like that. As we have just said, this road goes from nowhere to nowhere, so it's pretty empty. And I'm yet to see a lorry. Also, with so little traffic, there's not many potholes, not many unruly bumps, you know, the sort of thing you get on the busier roads. There's also almost no side roads and very few driveways. There are some corners, for example, this one. <laughs> And then there's this one. <laughs> so there are one or two of those, but for the most part, the satellite road is lots of straightliness. Lots and lots of wide open straightliness. And this is part of why people use this road as a racetrack. By public road standards, it's relatively safe except the parts that are not. While people do use this road to test whatever latest and greatest speed machines they have, I'm doing it differently. Now I am on a GS, so we're gonna kind of approach this differently and do something I've never done on this road before. Go relaxed. And as a relaxed road, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm noticing a whole lot of stuff I've kind of never noticed before. You know, when you're tucked under the ferry and going, ah, 
for example, the road follows between two sort of hills. We've got what's called, what I call, the small Macaulay's Burke on that side. And on that side, we've got a whole lot of hills and all sorts of things. This is the hilliest part of Crown Tate. And now it's the rainy season, so it's all lush, it's green. There's places where you go through what feels like a tree-lined tunnel. And just over every hill, around every whatever few corners you can find. It's just more lush, brilliant, beautifulness. And let's not forget, there's some cool satellite dishes also. That brings us to why this is called the Satellite Road. It's the Satellite Dishes. The first lot belonged to Telcom, who provide telephone services to people who have never heard of cables. If you spend some time there, you can watch the dishes move as people make telephone calls to weird places. But there's much more than that on the Satellite Road. Much, much more. What's so interesting about these is that they were originally built by NASA in 1962 in order for them to monitor spacecraft going to the moon and how cool is that so all the moon landings and that they were monitoring from the southern hemisphere over here that is super cool uh, since then nasa has given it to the south african whatever it's called it's now used for astronomy so what they'll do is they'll go look at extraterrestrial planets and suns and moons and nebula and i don't know much about it but i just think it's so cool that we have something like this here in South Africa because overseas they've got tons of cool stuff and we kind of get left with lions and tigers and whatever have you but this is cool we've got some technology it's used to measure nebula and planets and all that kind of stuff it's also used for something called geoidal something or other you can tell I'm more into motorcycles to ask me all about throttle bodies and that and I'm all good these things not so much but what it does is it measures the shape of the earth you'd kind of think after all this time they would have figured it out by now it's round Apart from good scenery, interesting astronomical wonders, and um, maybe a bit of go fast, there is also a house for people who like taking photos of themselves, an upside down house, a place to learn how to ride off road good, and much, much more. That's definitely why people come here. That's the real reason not to ride fast. Promise. I still can't believe this bike. It's seven years old and honestly it feels like new. And it's not like a 2015 GS is a bad thing. No, 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 no. If anything, you know the older was most probably more mature and in this case didn't ride it very often. It is brand new. And you pick it up for what is relatively a bargain. It's 200,000 Rand cheaper than a new one. And it's from the Joburg area, so very little humidity, no rust. This is a good bike for really good price. And I mean, new bike prices are expensive. They're off the chart expensive these days. And um, what's wrong with buying a bike like this? Especially one in such good nick, such low mileage. It it's worth it, it's worth it. It really is worth it. Now, Joburg is not famous for its roads. It's really not. I mean, people in Cape Town are laughing. People in the Durban Natal area are laughing. Anyone overseas, in Europe especially, watching this on YouTube is going, hey? Because over there they've got driveways more exciting than anything in this Houtek Joburg area. But as far as roads in Joburg go, this is one of the better ones for many things. I mean, there's a few corners to have fun, but it's not like there's any really great corners around the Joburg area anyway. And it is open, it is so scenic, it's so beautiful, the road is good, everything is good. But, you know, we're not going to go fast or anything because that'll be dangerous, definitely. 